Hi guys, this is Pestilian. Welcome to the epilogue of the Hardcore Season 5 season. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you got all the way up to here um, and you've watched every episode, thank you so much for watching so many episodes. I think it was about 92 episodes in completion. And I'm actually filming this um, just after a couple of days after I finished the filming of the last episode. Now, um, the Hardcore Season, this one was by far the most enjoyable season I've ever had of Hardcore. And honestly, I I missed it already. I'm actually excited to do it again next wipe. So just uh, as a precursor, I will be doing it again. But in this video, I want to uh, talk about how the season unfolded, things that I liked and disliked about it, some tweaks I might like to see in the future. But overall, I just want to give a bit of a summary um, just so you guys know where my head's at with the, uh, the whole season. So guys, without further ado, let's crack straight into it. All right, so I'm going to go over um, the points of, you know, the skills overall, all that stuff, how the uh, my inventory worked and, and everything like that, and also talk about some things I'd like to see in the future and all that. So we'll start off the overall screen. It took me 600 rains to get the cap container. I actually thought that's pretty good, um, in all honesty. There were some moments where uh, we were progressing really well, some moments where we got a little bit stagnant, particularly with specific key. But overall, it worked out quite well, and I'm really happy with how... Uh, in 600 raids with 60% survival rate, which is just under two thirds of the raids I survived, um, we got through the entire hardcore challenge. Um, now, the the one thing I, I guess that really does make it a little bit different for me compared to maybe some other people that are playing this is the fact that the later it gets in the wipe, the less players I have uh, going into my raids because I live in Australia. Um, I can really only select three servers, four on a good day. Um, I can't kind of get stuck uh, on how many people are in my raids, particularly the nighttime factory. And that makes it uh, really difficult to get specific quests done. If I was to do the hardcore challenge at the very start of the wipe, that would not be an issue at all. But at the start of the wipe, I do really enjoy playing my main account and I put as much time and effort into my main account uh, to learn all the new stuff, check out all the new changes and make footage on that. So um, how, do I, how do I adapt that into the future? I could start the hardcore challenge earlier, but when I do get into the hardcore mindset, I really just get obsessed with it. And I just want to play it. So uh, I'm going to kind of keep the same format moving forward. I will probably play the main account for the first wipe, uh, first month of the wipe and then move into hardcore from there. But uh, yeah, it was really, um, that's it's a bit of an issue that some raids were a little bit drawn out. Say I was trying to find someone for Shooter Born in Heaven or or uh, get the grenade kills or even uh, nighttime kills. That makes it a little bit more difficult. But um, the way I kind of plan out how I'm going to do my quest is I try and make it that I get on those more sticking quests earlier on. So then, um, for example, grenade kills will get done passively or nighttime kills will get done passively whilst doing other quests. So that's the, always the objective. It doesn't always turn out like that. But for example, if I was on that nighttime kill when I was trying to get the old logistics, it'd be a totally different story because I did so many nighttime custom runs and I killed a lot of players during that. It wouldn't have been an issue at all. And we did have a 13 uh, win survival streak. It, it really does get difficult when you're trying to get uh, PvP quest done and you're wanting to survive a lot because you do have to try, try and take a few more risks as well you're not running the um the most the best gear all the time so it makes it quite difficult to get some of that gear um when you're trying to like get the best gear to do a quest and then that quest requires you to wear specific loadouts and then you've got to get put yourself in a position where you got to take fights on to get those quests done so that right there makes it a lot harder to have big long survival streaks um and then obviously you just don't always have it turn out exactly how you'd like. Um, PvP wise, we actually did get a lot of PvP kills. So we got 305 PMC kills. So it's one every two raids. Um, like the, the hardcore challenge isn't about just rushing in and trying to kill players every raid. Uh, a lot of the raids I was hiding through the back of Goshen trying to find items to upgrade the hideout or trying to find keys and jackets or just trying to get my quest done without running into other players. So um, there was a lot of avoiding PvP uh, and then when there was time to do PvP, I was going straight for it, obviously. So, um, yeah, that is what it is. Um, the, snip the sniping actually was actually quite good overall. Uh, it was actually quite fun. And um, it wasn't too difficult to get sniper rivals because I know particularly the sniper quest can get quite frustrating. But the fact that, like, the sniper scavs have sniper rifles, there's a fair few of them. Um, it actually worked out quite well. And the VPO also counts. And you can find them on scavs quite often as well. So it's not just the Mosin anymore. Um, so I was really happy with how that worked. 
Skill wise, I was actually quite amazed how high we got our endurance skill, level 42, and strength got level 17. Um, this happens passively as you just run around, and then strength is when you're overweight. So um, the more raids you do, the faster you'll get your endurance up. And yeah, I think it probably would have only been another 100 raids and we would have had max level endurance, which is pretty sick. Um, it would have made it so I would have been running around a lot, a lot further and uh, makes PvP a lot easier the higher level you get of this because you're aiming down sight time and all that kind of stuff is uh, a lot easier because you're not soaking up your uh, stamina points as fast. As for the other skills, um, the probably the main ones that are a lot higher than most people that would be playing the game at, and be at level 50 and 600 raids is the fact that my perception skill uh, and attention skill are quite high as well as my search skill somewhere down here. Uh, 23 for the search skill after 600 raids. I was searching a lot of jackets and a lot of following cabinets and a lot of toolkits. So, um, yeah, it was really sick to actually get that. Uh, that those leveled up so much. The one thing that I think a lot of people would have been, um, I guess, a bit more, uh, I don't know. The strategy that I went with was, was this, get the hideout sorted, then worry about quests. So I wanted to get those stash upgrades done. I wanted to get... Um, containers made and and my con my containers throughout my inventory so then that way i could actually get uh plenty of space so when i am just focusing on the quest i could just do that not have to worry about oh, which gun do i hold on to or not later on in the hardcore like we had so much space that i could just you know i wasn't a worry at all i could just throw items i had plenty of item uh, med cases holodilnix scav junk boxes um ammo boxes mag boxes mag boxes was probably the one that i struggled with the most um later on but yeah got I, farming so many marked keys we actually got a fair few ammo cases and i got most of like the money case grenade box and a lot of these from from that um the thick case both thick cases really did make big turning points because the thick item case for example i just filled it up full of container uh, full of rigs like this and the bitcoin farm and uh finding all the bitcoins that i was getting from tetris and stuff was just giving me weapon case after weapon case eventually the way i would have probably done this was just have a row of like weapon cases along the bottom but uh fuel was the the biggest issue when it came to the bitcoin farm and so uh yeah we i think we got eight eight graphics cards in our bitcoin farm so yeah it's eight founding raid graphics cards which is pretty cool so yeah just and uh, we turned the fuel on whenever we had excess fuel i'm uh, probably about there now i think i got one extra fuel in there at the moment i got two extra so i would normally just wait till i had enough fuel to um go always have 24 hours up my sleeve and then i would make big coins up until i had 24 hours left stash wise you can see that i had plenty of guns but that was the beauty of it later on this was a lot of fun because i had so many guns um and for the rules changes from this season to the last one and why i quit after 30 30 episodes in the last season was the fact that i was not healing from therapists on death in the last season made it that half the raids i was going into I would just be uh, looking for meds because if I died, I'd have to use my meds to get back to full health. And then if I died three raids in a row, I would consume a lot of meds to the point where I'd just be going in naked to try and get more meds. And it was just this really shitty dynamic where I'd spend, say, five out of ten raids or like half my raids going in just specifically looking for meds. So I made sure that my, uh, my, med, my med containers had enough meds to get me through. Now... When I got to this point of the wipe, that wasn't an issue at all. I have plenty of meds, but um, early on the wipe, I, or in the season, I didn't have a large amount of meds, and um, but I still was able to progress and not worry about just farming meds, even though I was still picking up a lot of them. Um, and food and drink, um, most of this was just used for barter trades, but it was nice to be able to have all that con the container space there for the food and drink. Like, I just, I honestly can't floor the actual uh, the rule set of this season of the hardcore challenge honestly i loved it it was just a lot of fun it was really uh it, it was really smooth and i wouldn't change any of the rulings now full disclosure there was a couple of things that i guess i had influence on changing throughout the actual progression of the um of the hardcore but i also tried to make sure it would benefit the average player in the game as well to the best that i could so uh, a perfect example was um, for mechanic, the gunsmith part three task where you need a um, TDD, this one right here for the MP5. Um, this is going to like generally early wipe. This is a trade point for people. And for anyone doing the hardcore challenge, this item right here is just a brutal trade point. You cannot progress through it and it's just shit. 
Um, it, trying to find one of these could take you 100 raids, could take you 500 raids. And um, I could not find one at all. So I decided to uh, message BSG and ask if they would put a barter trade in. I had no choice on what the barter trades would be. And this is what um, BSG did. So um, there was a few of these times that I did this because I just it ruined the flow of the actual hardcore challenge. So the TDD was one of them. Another one that I had added, I think, was the Vel Pistol Grip. Um, because this one I also could not find anywhere. There was, there's no like barter trades elsewhere. A lot of the other um, gunsmith tasks, like for example, you can get this, and this gives you everything you need for gunsmith part one, minus the pistol grip, for example. So you just farm these items, and this was already in the game, by the way. You farm these items, and then you just get the pistol grip, and you've got that sorted. And then same with the uh, the AKS 74U, you can get most of those items found in raid or um, by barter trades from doing other barter trades. So uh, I tried my best to avoid doing that stuff. The next big one that I suppose I did that um, it definitely did make it so we could finish the actual hardcore seri series in a reasonable amount of time was the Goshen Key. Now, the Oli Logistics Key we farmed probably for about, I'm not even joking, probably about 100 raids. Um, we were farming it, all the jackets, and in the process also looking for the Goshen Key. Um, we did find the Oli Logistics Key eventually. We found two of them, um, but I still did not find the Goshen Key and I was checking the, the bus every single customs raid. So I asked BSG to add this trade in and it was the Goshen key. And the fact that like it's a fair bit of items and it took me a little bit to find them, but it was good that uh, I, it was added. So then I could actually progress past that quest. This one also does benefit a lot of people early wipe. So for example, early wipe, um, when you get to the supervisor quest, there's not a lot of these up for sale on the flea market and they're really expensive. So this will actually give a value to these four items in the game that um, BSG have done, as well as giving you a, an alternative choice to get the Goshen key. So whilst it might be a bit weird late wipe seeing a Goshen key added to the game to do the barter trade, um, it, this will actually be very beneficial to people early wipe not spending two, three million on a key to get a quest done that costs like, I don't know, it gives you like 120K rubles. So this one should hopefully make it a lot, uh, lot more value for these items and also be um, just a nice little trade to have in the game. I did have this added. I think I only used it once, but it wasn't actually for a quest. Um, and this was in case test drive part one. Test drive part one was uh, failed. So for example, test drive part one, you need an M1A with a DT mount, um, so a DT suppressor or DT hybrid suppressor and also a thermal sight. There is plenty of um, opportunities to get the the Reaper thermal sight. Like there's the barter trade here. There's uh, I think another way. I'm confident there's one more other way, but um, I would have to find the actual mount to get that in. now. Like I said, it, it's a little bit of a weird one um, to have added, but if I was to lose that gun, I wouldn't have an, any way to get a uh, thermal sight onto a gun and I'd have to farm these items, which could take me 100 raids to get that too. So it, it would have just been a massive sticking point. And the whole theory behind this is I really like the idea that even though like, yeah, I might be one individual doing the hardcore challenge, I know there is other people playing under these rule sets, not just content creators, just people that are just wanting to challenge themselves to go through the, uh, the game doing these uh, rules. So if you uh, are at home and you're like, I want to do the hardcore challenge, well, th these items being added sh don't really affect the wider player base at all. It's like, they don't even have to care about it. They probably wouldn't even know that this was added, but it just makes it that if you do want to be able to do these things, you can. So I like the idea that, um, I love the idea that BSG were able to support in that. Outside of that though, I don't really remember getting anything else added. I think there was like one other item um, to mechanic that was for a gunsmith quest but i don't believe i got it oh it was this one it was the annihilator so i had uh the mp the mpx ready to hand in besides the annihilator we couldn't find it at all and bsg added this one in so as for additions of barter trades i think that's pretty much it now so the the one thing about the old logistics key is particularly early wipe there's a good chance someone will open the door for you if you just go late to the raid and then that way you won't even need the key but the goshen key you have to hand in yourself so you need to be able to get that key for the quest so with every other uh, key in the game you don't actually have to find it yourself but the goshen key you do so that's the only reason why i asked asked for the uh the goshen key to be added but didn't stress too much about the other ones moving into where i see a hardcore challenge going into the future um, to be honest, oh, by the way, I, I don't know if, if, if anyone hasn't watched this or has just skipped to the end and see how, how did it all end up. Um, I had a million rubles, 4,000 euros, and I actually had $100,000, um, but I had nothing to spend dollars on, so I deleted them. So 
you know, you actually, I actually did make a fair bit of money during this account, but um, moving forward, um, I won't be doing more hardcore this season. I was tossing up the idea of potentially just doing the 100 killer kills for a bit of fun, just to see how I would go through going in interchange and trying to get the 100 killer kills, but I've decided against it because I feel like it might be a little bit too frustrating. Um, I, I won't rule it off at all uh, completely, but it's unlikely, and if I did, I probably wouldn't make a specific series of videos for that it would just be you'd see it in my normal highlight footage but besides that i um i really do love the rule set and uh, a special shout out to deadly slob again for making up the original rule set probably about two years ago and they've slowly been adapted uh over the the changes of the game but it's uh it's been an absolute blast and i think next season i don't think i'll change any of the rules um last season i didn't and i i hurt myself for it because of the whole therapist thing um because Therapist hadn't had, uh, you didn't have to heal from therapists at the end of each raid um, when you died. And so we were like, oh, we'll just try it without it. But actually there is one rule that I'm gonna change. So I felt like I was cheating being able to put all the keys into my container. So the one rule that I will change next wipe uh, and next season, and is you can loot any unidentified key into your container. So if you haven't ID'd it, uh, and uh, you don't have one before, you can put it into your container. After you've already found one and looted one, you can no longer put it in your container. However, there is one exclusion to this and it's going to be um, any key that has uses. So mark key, factory key, um, the Sturman key, all those ones that have multiple uses, um, you can put in your container, but every other key that you loot, you can only ever put it in your container uh, the very first time you find it. And that will be the rule set. Uh, change. I, I I feel like I was cheating by going into customs, looting like I don't know twenty keys into an into empty key tools, and then just vendoring them to to uh, to the traders to get my cash flow up, so I could do certain upgrades like stash upgrades and that. Uh, I did feel a little bit dirty doing that, and no one ever commented about it because it was part of the rule set. And honestly, I was getting shafted from other reasons, so you know it evens itself out in the end. But that will probably be the only rule change that I would have for next uh, season. And I think you guys can get behind that. Um, I think I think that adds to it more than it detracts from it. Um, just keep it in that hardcore mindset. Besides that, guys, I'd love to hear any of your feedback, things you loved about it, things you disliked about it, uh, particularly if you watched the whole season. Um, if there was something that stood out and you're like, I'd love, love to see more of that, would like to hear about that. We get, definitely kept the editing to a minimum. So we just removed all the, the loading screens and made it so you guys could just watch the actual whole progression because it is a very challenging thing to do to get through the whole game just using barter trades only and crossing your heart out. So um, I will continue, continue to keep that format moving forward into the next season as well because I feel like that's a, we all benefit the most from that um, as, a, as an enjoyable experience for you guys to watch it and for me to... Uh, it, it doesn't take as long to edit that and we can just show you some uh some of the the better moments uh in the like the in the previous episode of but we might if you got a cool idea of how to add to it um we might include it but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this season i loved it honestly i'm as soon as it was over i'm like fuck what do i do now i i don't know what to do so because it was just so good and, and and it made the game feel really fresh for me so moving forward i'm excited to uh give it another go next next uh what um besides that guys if you do like do you have any comments if you just enjoyed it you want to take a moment just to you know write in the comments that you enjoyed it thank you um for the uh comment for the youtube algorithm and also make sure you do like any youtube video you find enjoyable on uh anyone's youtube channel because uh it, it does help with discoverability if you're uh if you're after different kinds of content, I'm going to be doing probably the snowball challenge and I'm going to be farming a heap of XP stuff, learning uh, the best routes to make XP on labs and other maps. Um, so I'm going to be planning on working on that a little bit. But uh, as for this wipe, um, that is it for the hardcore season. So um, thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed already, help me get to the 500k mark and then we can move to the million. Um, but do appreciate all the support you guys give. Um, hope you uh, had a safe and wonderful period over the time of the hardcore. Hopefully if it's got you through some shitty times and a bit of distraction, give you something to look forward to each day. Um, it's my pleasure that I could give something to you guys that you guys enjoy. Um, and thank you so much for all the kind words. Uh, and if you're looking for a little bit of different content, I've got my Pestoy on Mask channel where I'm just posting some other content just for a bit of fun. Um, so yeah. If you do see some new content on the YouTube channel as well, I'll probably be posting some other game content. Um, just 
first time playing different games and checking them out if you guys are interested. So besides that, lastly, guys, for the last time in Season 5 of the Hardcore series, I'll see you next time.